Good day. Thanks for the opportunity to share with you about receivables. This is the equivalent of a discussion group. Uh, it's more difficult to get discussion groups on video and make it an effective lesson, especially when it's an interactive discussion such as this one should be. In many ways, this is much like what you heard in lecture already about choosing the amount of the adjusting entry for receivables. I think it's very, very important that you have an attitude of participating in the dialogue here, even though I can't call on you nor respond to your specific response, your specific answer. You need to practice the solution to the questions that are going to come up in this episode. Please, please, please participate as if you were in class or even more so that you can fully benefit from this presentation. In second discussion, we're working exercise 9-3 on page 441 from the textbook. I invite you to turn there and read with me. Exercise 9-3 says, the ledger of our company at the end of the current year shows accounts receivable of 120000 revenue of 840000 and sales returns and allowances of 30000 this is similar to the exercise we worked at the end of lecture on Monday. Instruction A says if our company uses the direct write-off method to account for uncollectible accounts, journalize the adjusting entry at December 31st assuming we determine that customer G's $1,400 balance is uncollectible. In the book it says assume we use the direct write-off method. As you can see on the screen, I've also added another assumption. Let's do both. First of all, let's do it the way the book asks us to. Let's assume that our company is using the direct write-off method and we want to write off a customer's account. If we were in class, I'd say, hey class, what do you credit? And all of you would say, you credit accounts receivable. That should be obvious. When you write off an account, you credit accounts receivable. The question is, what do you debit? And what you debit depends on the method you're using. We've been instructed to follow the direct write-off method this time. When you write off an account under the direct write-off method, you debit bad debts expense. Debit bad debts expense and credit accounts receivable to write off the account under the circumstance described in the textbook. But if we added the additional instruction that I'm wanting us to to provide a contrast, let's also consider what entry we would make if we wrote off an account under the allowance method. If we were using the allowance method, we would write off an account by crediting what account? Say it to yourself. It's accounts receivable. When you write off an account under either method, you credit accounts receivable. It's the distinguishing feature between the two methods is what you debit. We did the direct write-off method and saw that we debited bad debts expense. Under the allowance method, you debit the allowance account. That's what it's for. We made that provision, that estimate ahead of time, for such a time as this. We're debiting allowance for doubtful accounts and crediting accounts receivable for the amount of the customer's account we don't expect to collect. Let's contrast those two. On the screen, you should see both entries. And note that both entries credit accounts receivable. The difference in the two is that under the direct write-off method, you debit bad debts expense to write off the account. That's how it gets its name. We called it the direct write-off method because you debit the expense directly. No allowance account to deal with. You debit bad debts expense directly at the time you write off the account. On the other hand, the allowance method has the allowance account just for this purpose. You debit the allowance account when you write off an account under the allowance method. I hope you have those two sorted out in your mind and you know the appropriate entry to make in either circumstance. Let's continue with the exercise. In letter B, it, well, before we can do any of those things, we need to decide which method we're using. The problem started out in letter A, suggesting strongly that we were using the direct write-off method. But in letter B, it says we have an allowance account. Which method are we using? Direct write-off? or allowance. Choose one. If we have an allowance account, we must be using the allowance method. 
There's no such thing as the allowance account under the direct write-off method. We are using the allowance method. It says, if the allowance for doubtful accounts had a credit balance of $2,100. Well, I hope you've noticed over on the left side of the screen, I've got general ledger accounts represented to, for all the facts in the problem. And this time, we're adding the allowance account with a credit balance of $2,100. The question I have for you is, is that the normal balance? Allowance for doubtful accounts is contra asset, contra receivables. Its normal balance is credit. So we've got a $2,100 normal balance. And continuing with the exercise instructions, it says journalize the adjusting entry at December 31st, assuming that these things. We need to know what adjusting entry to make, and there are two situations that we could encounter. In letter B, first of all, it says, what if bad debts expense is expected to be 1% of net sales? Let's do the math. 1% of net sales. Well, sales is 840,000. Sales returns and allowances was 30,000. Net sales is 810,000. The 810,000 we need to multiply by, the, by our estimate, which was 1% of net sales. 1% of net sales would be $8,100. We need to debit bad debts expense and credit allowance for doubtful accounts for this provision that we're encountering. We're going to do four of these in this, in this video. In each of the cases, you're going to hear me say debit bad debts expense and credit allowance for doubtful accounts. That's the year-end adjusting entry. In each of these four situations, the amount of the entry is the subject of this exercise we have $8,100 as a possibility this time. Let's consider two other possibilities. $8,100 is 1% of net sales. We could add the amount in the allowance account, $2,100, and get $10,200 as a possible choice. Or we could subtract the $2,100 and get $6,000 as a choice. $8,100 minus the balance of the allowance account, 2100 Three good choices, 10200 8100 and 6000 The question is, for how much should the entry be made? Debit bad debts expense, credit allowance for doubtful accounts for one of these answers. In class, I would have you hold your hand up. In class, I would write your choices on the chalkboard. I would count how many people were in the class. I expect each of you watching this video to make a commitment to an answer right this minute and choose one of those on the screen. The right answer is 8100. I hope you chose it, but if you chose it, I hope you chose it for the right reason. If you didn't choose 8100, let's talk about why 8100 is the right choice. We have two possibilities. We could base our estimate on revenue or we could base it on receivables. If you look at the fact circumstance in the problem it said 1% of net sales. And from Monday's lecture you may remember the decision tree where I attempted to contrast this for you. In this case there was uh, based on revenue there's just this big blank area on the decision tree that suggests that you multiply a percentage times sales or sales on account and then make the entry for that number. When we take an income statement view like this, we're being told how much we want in the bad debts expense account based on revenue, that's an income statement approach, we want that much in the expense account. You just make the entry for that much. You don't consider the balance of the allowance account. 8100 was the best answer. In item B, the second part says, but what if we based it on receivables. What if we said 10% of accounts receivable were to be uncollectible? Well, let's come up with three possible choices. Accounts receivables balance is 120,000. Let's debit bad debts expense and credit allowance for doubtful accounts for 120 times 10%, 12,000 perhaps. Or 
perhaps we want to consider the balance of the allowance account. Let's add 2100 to that and get 14100 as a possible choice. Or let's subtract from our 10% estimate, 12000 the balance of the allowance account, 2100 and see that 9900 is a possible answer. Three good choices. 14100 12000 and 9900 I'm stalling while you think. I'm hoping that you'll choose an answer and not just wait on the video to tell you the right answer and go figure it out later. Now's your time to think. Choose the right answer and build your confidence. Choose the wrong answer and learn from your mistake. In class, I'd have you raise your hands and we'd keep track of how many people got this one right. And when we did all four of these circumstances, most discussions see improvement and see more people getting right answers as we get to the end of this discussion. In this circumstance, we would debit bad debts expense and credit allowance for doubtful accounts for 9900 There was already 2100 in the account. We'd like the balance of the account to be 12000 This was based on receivables. If you base it on receivables, you must consider the balance that's already in the allowance account. Or another way to look at that, if you base it on receivables, you're being told what you want the balance of the allowance account to be. I'd like the balance of the allowance account to be 12000 when I'm finished. Then I need to make an entry for 9900 only the 9900 not the entire balance. When you make a journal entry for 9900 and post it to that account, update that account, see that its balance would be 12000 exactly what the estimate should be. Let's consider Part C. Part C in the book says, if the allowance for doubtful accounts has a debit balance of $200, would that be normal or abnormal? A debit balance in the account is considered to be abnormal. This is contra asset. It reduces receivables. Its normal balance is credit. Why would we have a debit balance? I can think of two possible reasons. We missed our estimate or Perhaps we've written off accounts, debited the account because of accounts being written off during, the, during this year of our business and haven't made a provision in the, in the allowance account yet. We've written off more than we've provided for. So there's a $200 debit balance. The instructions are to journalize the entry at the end of December, assuming bad debts are expected to be three quarters of 1% of net sales. Let's do the math. 3 quarters of 1% of net sales, 810,000 times 3 quarters of 1% is 6,075. Don't take my word for it. You calculate it yourself real quickly and see that that's the true answer. 6,075 is a good choice, but there are two others we could, should consider. We could add the balance of the allowance account and subtract the balance of the allowance account from this 6,075 and come up with two possible answers. 6075 plus the $200 debit balance is 6275. 6075 minus the 200 is 5875. Three good choices emerge. 6275, 6075, 5875. I'm going to pause a moment and let you think and choose. I hope you choose the right one. We should make a journal entry, debit bad debts expense, credit allowance for doubtful accounts, for the amount 6075 This was based on revenue. We were told three quarters of one percent of net sales. If it's based on revenue, that's an income statement approach. Allowance for doubtful accounts is on the balance sheet. It has nothing to do with this calculation. Ignore the balance of the allowance account and simply make the journal entry for the amount of our calculation, 6075 This is Part C and the second part. The instructions in the problem ask us to make the journal entry at the end of the year assuming 6% of accounts receivable is our estimate of uncollectibles. 
Let's do the math. 6% of accounts receivable, 120,000 times 6% is 7,200. Don't take my word. Do it yourself. We should consider the balance of the allowance account in coming up with two other possible answers. Let's add the 200 and subtract the 200. Adding would give us 7,400 as a possibility. Subtracting would give us 7,000 as a possibility. Sometimes coming up with the possible answers is part of your understanding of how to do the whole thing. Three good answers. 7,400, 7,200, 7,000. Have you decided? I hope you have. This journal entry, debit bad debts expense to match the right amount with the right year. Credit allowance for doubtful accounts to reduce receivables to what we expect to collect. Should be made for 7,400 this time. We want the balance of the account to be 7,200 credit when we finished. When we post 7,400 to that account, combine it with the 200 debit that's already there. The ending balance is 7,200, just the amount that we estimated, just the amount we want to be in that account. I'm hoping that you followed along with this. I'm hoping that you made decisions during the video to check your math. I'm hoping that you'll reread the textbook and the author's explanation of this very thing and reinforce your understanding with textbook examples and author's explanation. And I'm hoping that you'll find others to practice during the week to build your confidence and understanding on this topic. Thanks for spending time with me. Have a great day.